and we are in just a few moments going to see a trailer for Color Me, the film documentary. Uh, but first, uh, let's meet the subject. Anthony McLean has appeared on the Stratford Festival stage doing Shakespeare. Uh, you've been a CBC television host, but you are not an actor in Color Me. No, it's easy to play another person's life on stage or on screen, relatively. But to truly be yourself when a camera is rolling, as you probably know, it can be challenging. And this is very dear to your heart. It is your story. Mm -hmm. Give us some of the background. This is a real eye opener for me. Yeah, well, you know, I grew up uh, with a, a, a father who is Jamaican, he's black, and my mom is Canadian, she's white. So that makes me confused. I'm just somewhere in the middle. And so I grew up uh, with my white mother in a white neighborhood, and uh, I never really thought about skin color. And I had a happy childhood, everything was cool. And then when I went to school, I had some kids, not everybody, I had friends, but some kids that would tease me because I was different. And I wanted more than anything else just to blend in, just to be like everyone else. I didn't want to be different. And uh, so that's sort of, that was my, those are the roots. The psychologists say teenagers spend over 90% of their time trying not to be embarrassed. <laughs> and here you are projecting an issue that applies to anyone of mixed race. Would this be pervasive, Anthony? You know, it's funny. Uh, so the film follows me wrestling with sort of what does it mean to be black and am I really black because I'm half white and, and all that stuff. And I worried that maybe this would only resonate with the black community. But what we found, yesterday we were in Waterloo, we've been in uh, Montreal, we've been in Halifax, Edmonton, and what we found all across Canada is people coming up saying, you know what, my dad is German, my mother is Dutch, and at you know Christmas events with my family, I'm caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. I just heard from a woman yesterday who was legally blind. Now she still has partial sight, but she's legally blind. And she says, sometimes if, if it's a dark day, she can't see anything, she feels completely blind. But if it's really bright, she can see. And she says, sometimes I find myself wanting to identify as a blind person, but sometimes I don't, and I want to pretend that I, I have full sight. And she said, I resonated with your film, even though I couldn't see it, because I heard your story, and I know what it feels to be caught in the middle. Isn't that interesting? Not to fit. Yeah. You know, I engage, yeah. I mentioned off the top of the hour, that you have a mission to counter bullying, mm -hmm. particularly in the schools. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that was fueled by the, the distress you had growing up. And again, it's not, it, it's, it's the black community saying you don't fit. It's not just the white meanness. Yeah, see which that's... Is, I, I unexpected. Yeah, yeah. See that that that's the thing because at least if you could fit in with one community, then you, it's okay that you know when you're with the other community that some people don't accept you. But the thing for me was, um, I went from being made fun of because I was too black by a handful of people to all of a sudden black people saying, "Oh no, you're too white." <laughs> and so when I'm around some white friends, they're saying, "Oh, you're too black." When I'm around some black friends, you're too white. And it's like, "Where do I fit?" Fit, you know. And what's the term you used in the green room? Ghetto, ghetto. Oh, yeah, because you know, some people said, "Oh, I'm not ghetto enough, so I'm not I, really black." Oh, out of Mississauga? Yeah. Who's, who's ghetto in Mississauga? Oh, we we represent in Mississauga. Holla. No, I'm playing. Uh, you know what? That's that's the thing, right? There's so many kids growing up in suburbs. Black kids in suburbs that are not living in the ghetto. And this is what we talk about in the trailer. You'll see it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, but it's this pressure that because you're black, you have to fit into this mold and, and act like a gangster when that's not our reality, or at least it wasn't my reality. Sure not the high bar. <laughs> I get it. And now you've got the context. Let's take a look at Color Me. We're seeing youth that live in nice homes, and they're not living in the ghetto. They're not living in the hood. It's for black folks. That means you must stop fighting. But they have a ghetto mind state. You know what he called me? He said I was whitewashed. They said, Mom, if we play rugby, we'll be the ball. Every time I say, we as black people, I'm always like, you guys cool with that? Is that all right? Am I in the club? 
What kind of jokes do people make? You're so dark, you look like tar. Oh, you're having a white moment. Well, you didn't even do our normal thing, Doc. You're so ghetto. I'm from Brampton, I'm a blood kid. You're not. This is yeah. flower town. <laughs> the brand new racists, they have black friends. But to the brand new racists, if you are not ghetto, then you are not black. How do you know I, you're black? How do I know I'm black? Because I look black. There's no country called Black Edia, and then you come from there and you're black. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for the world, so sweet. sweet. You have Viking blood in you. Is that on a Norse chin? Come on. Are you denying your whiteness? I actually use it when it's beneficial. Did I say that? Get off my face, get off you. So you talk to me about how these people are so ignorant, but look at your report cards. You are the stereotype. What kind of assumptions do you think people see if they see black? Honestly, fear. Anthony is somebody who is acting. I don't fit the stereotype. Fly with me, come on! He's basically wanting us to finish what he did. I don't know why I like that so much. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Let's try to teach these kids what it means to be black because I don't really know myself. Wow. I'm glad we talked first. <laughs> that was your uncle who said, that's a Norse chin. Yeah, he said, this is a Norse chin. What do you think? I don't know. Anyone in the audience that uh, has a Norse background can let me know. This, <laughs> this is Charles Dickens, so just because it's his birthday today. Yes. I think you'll like this. He said, the whole difference between construction and creation is exactly this, that a thing constructed can only be loved after it is constructed, but a thing created is loved before it exists. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. Now that's true in heaven's eyes. Yeah. God knit you together in your mother's womb. That's right. And he loved you and planned for you. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, did you feel loved? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate because I have a family that just heaped the love on me. So I had love coming out my ears. My mom just smothered us with love and aunts and uncles and, and my dad. And so, so I did feel loved. The problem wasn't at home. The problem was when you go to school, you don't feel the love all the time. And I'm not just talking from a, from a me. I'm talking from, you know, the kids that I work with that are being bullied. Even the ones that come from a home where they're getting lots of love, it can be hard when you go to school and you're trying to fit in. You're just trying to figure out where do I fit. And uh, so that's really important. And I think it's so good to be grounded first off in the love of God. Because when you know that you're loved, even before, just like you said, from Psalm 139, that when you were in your mother's womb, he knit you together, he loves you, the hairs of your head are all numbered. When you know that you're loved that much, then who cares if someone else doesn't like your shoes? Who cares if someone else doesn't invite you to that party? You are loved by the maker of heaven. Like, when you really dwell on that, all of a sudden, those other people that don't like you, it's like... It's their problem. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And not in like a cocky way or like, no. I don't need you, but just like, I know I'm loved, and so I'm secure in that, and I can just be myself. And that's what I'm really trying to do, like, personally, is settle into being myself and not feeling like, oh, I should be a little more black now or because I'm around black people, or I should be a little more white now. Because what does that even mean? That's the whole thing, you know?